In the beginning, or about four weeks ago, I began a journey to refresh and reorganize my dated kitchen into a space that provided both an efficient and peaceful environment. During that time, I've completed the baking station, the cooking center, established a morning area, as well as a to-go and food storage station. Today, we're moving into the cabinets above the fridge and taking a tour of both the cooling and freezing areas of the refrigerator. I'll link the previous kitchen zones below, but let's get things started, sweet friends. Grocery prices keep rising, but did you know an average family of four loses about $1,500 a year on wasted food? That's a lot of money down the drain. What can you do to combat wasted resources? Well, I believe one answer may be found in proper refrigerator organization. You can't eat what you don't see, and if your spaces are packed too full, you're probably fighting a losing battle. Before I share some of my tips and tricks for efficient cold food storage, let's check out what I keep in those cabinets above the fridge. I've shared with you in the past the honor I had of inheriting my great-grandmother's china, and though I've gifted several pieces, most of it is still waiting to go home with one of my daughters. I purchased these storage bags from Amazon. The five-piece set came with varying size containers to house the dishes, but if I'm honest, I'm a little disappointed in them, and I'll tell you in a minute why. I also bought a set of felt liners that go between each piece to ensure no chipping or scratching. However, you can see they have no structure, not even a hard bottom. When I purchased plate storage for my entertaining closet, I believe the higher price is worth going with a hard-sided set. Let's make our way down and check out that freezer, but I do want to give you a fair warning. I prefer fresh foods and I loathe this bottom freezer setup. I actually avoid using it as much as possible, so it's by no means full. However, I do have some items housed there each week, so what's the proper temperature for an at-home freezer? The FDA recommends zero degrees. Appliance thermometers are available inexpensively and it's worth checking out periodically. There are only two shelves in my freezer, though they do pull out. With the ice machine taking up quite a bit of the top shelf, I divided the remaining area into two sections with this inexpensive bin from Dollar Tree. It houses quick frozen meals and items like french fries and pizza rolls, while the open section is available for ice creams and frozen desserts. Three more bins fit neatly on the bottom shelf and provide plenty of space if needed for my frozen veggies, meat I may have purchased in bulk, and frozen bags of fruit. You can see I have plenty of room still available, so if you have a larger stock of frozen items, there's ample storage to separate them by category, even if you're working with a small freezer. Labeling everything makes both putting groceries away or pulling needed items out easy for the entire family. The freezer door houses my husband's favorite sweet treats and leaves room for miscellaneous or overflow items. It also makes a perfect place to store those frozen bread products. The space is tiny, but items are accessible and neatly stored. I am, however, excited to be replacing this appliance soon. I'll link an article from delish.com below that shows what you shouldn't store in your freezer, but items include coffee, milk, eggs, and cheese. Now it's on to the refrigerator. I'm going to tell you, I am very excited to show you this today. As you can see, let's begin on this top shelf. Beginning on the left-hand side, I have this container to store all of my fresh herbs. I do not have each individual container labeled, as of course those vary from week to week, but those are the same jars I use for my dry spices that I purchased from Ikea very inexpensively. They're easy to access and I just enjoy having them there. I do not, however, drink enough water. And I thought if I set up a water bar inside of my refrigerator, it might make me get into the habit of drinking water a little more often. I set up this Lazy Susan with some of my favorite water additives and man, I am really loving this. Now moving down into the middle section, and this is where you want to store your dairy items. Uh, maybe not your butter necessarily, but things like your milk, cream, sour creams, yogurt, they need to stay not in your door where the temperature fluctuates so heavily. 
I've got a couple of jars of different kind of jams and then an open space that I'm storing a pineapple this week, but it can be used for anything that I need for overflow throughout the week. My little deli drawer holds all my cheeses, deli meats, and bacon. Now, I had just recently gone to the store and stocked up, so things have not been removed from the original packaging other than the hard cheeses that have been wrapped in wax paper. And I did open the goat cheese and I stored it into one of those glass containers that I showed you last week. Anything that I have left over of the turkey, bacon, chicken salad, those can also be stored in those glass containers. Easy to see what I have, very neatly kept in the drawer. Heading down, you'll see I have a bin that right now is empty, but normally I would store leftovers in there from dinner. Whatever I'm having that night, if there's anything left, it goes into that container. Everyone in the family then knows it's available for lunch the next day. I keep my eggs and other meats on the bottom shelf. This prevents contamination with any of your other foods should there be a leak. And I have one set just for today's products. I can take that out, put anything that I need to with it, take it over to the stove and have everything ready to go. In this bin, I just keep all of the meat that I'll be using throughout the week. Now, fruit and vegetable storage is a little tricky. You need to understand that fruits need low humidity. And that is why these bins are marked with your humidity gauges on them. Yours at home are going to be exactly the same way. Vegetables require a little bit higher humidity and you can keep things stored in here for a longer period of time if you have those settings adjusted properly. Now I have a couple of no-nos in here, tomatoes and hot peppers. You can keep those actually out on your counter and they uh, actually do a little bit better. However, I'm using them for snacking this week and I wanted them cold. Lettuces can either be stored in a small container of water or wrapped in some damp paper towel. Moving on to the door, here you just see an overview of everything that we have in this door. Notice that I'm keeping things like condiments, salad dressings, butter, things that don't easily perish. The bottom container holds several containers of pickled foods. These are pickles, olives, relishes, artichokes. Each glass container is so easy to look at and see at just picking it up. Do I have enough? Do I need to replace this? In fact, changing all of my kitchen over to acrylic and glass storage containers have made my grocery making list so easy. As we move up the door, you can see that I've taken all of the garlics that I use, not fresh garlics. That should not be put in the refrigerator, but your minced and chopped garlics that come in the jars, those do have to be refrigerated once opened. I just purchased some Dollar Tree containers that are airtight and that keeps them fresh. All of my condiments I've replaced with either glass bottles or the squeeze containers. Now, I did try to use the glass soap pumps for most of those condiments and it just didn't work, but these squeeze containers still look nice and they work. I have my salad dressings stored in these airtight acrylic bottles along with the butter. And then this I am so excited about. You can see in the middle I keep my water that I have every night for my bedroom that I showed in a previous video. But I've set up an in-refrigerator mimosa bar for Saturdays or Sundays at brunch. I don't have to think about it. It's there and ready for me. Everything's kept cool. You may like Bloody Marys. Set up something for yourself to really enjoy. Just like the freezer, the fridge has optimal temperatures to keep food safe, between 35 and 38 degrees and never any higher than 40. 
Oh, sweet friends, I'm only about halfway finished with my kitchen, but I'll be taking the next two or three weeks to post on various other topics because returning to this space is going to take me just a minute. I hope you're finding loads of ideas you can incorporate into your own kitchen for peace, pleasure, and efficiency. You deserve to prep, cook, and store your food in an environment sprinkled with sparkle. <laughs>